Hi, this is Kevin. I'm going to be going over how to set up the at, uh, to set up your Terraform to connect to your Palo Alto firewall to be able to push updates to it faster, do testing, and I'm going to be doing this using um, a product called EVNG, which is almost like GNS3 if you're familiar with that. But it's more it's just a web-based platform to be able to test and deploy virtual networks. So in my network here. Um, I have two Palo Alto firewalls and if you have any questions in regards to this setup or how to get the images into EVNG, shoot me a message down below and I'll be sure to get back with you. So basically I have this connected to my home network and it's connected from like a management standpoint so basically I can manage this using the web interface as well. So once I power these up, if I log in, I still just have the default admin admin password if you're setting this up for the first time too and if I do show interface management I'm gonna see that this is uh, actually deployed to my local network with the address 192.168.1.131 so now if I open up another tab and I go to that 192.168.1.131 I should be able to then log in with that same username and password which I was already logged into before so it already came up so now we have full connectivity um, to the client and we also have uh, access to it via the um, CLI. So um, now that I have this set up, I do maybe now I want to test out deploying some configs to it. And this is great because then you don't have to worry about doing this to your live network, you know, bringing anything down, accidentally deleting something. And that's where Terraform comes in. So in my GitHub repo, I have a, let me pull it up here, under my Terraform repository, there is a Palo Alto config, and it's very basic, I don't have much in there, so basically it's just, you know, the required providers, the provider itself, the uh, login, and then if I go back, uh, I just have a variable file that contains the password and stuff like that, if you uh, pull that down and, and log in using so you can uh, either pull this down um, or kind of just copy what's in there. But basically, a lot of this configuration was just pulled from, uh, you know, so the default in my main.tf, this required providers is basically the source we're pulling from this Palo Alto Networks Pan OS. That way you can pull down the correct, um, you know, modules and stuff that it needs. And then this resource block that kind of defines, oops, no, not that one, so down here. I'm gonna have to, I moved it up in my local, I just got to push it back up. So basically this resource block kind of defines our host name, um, the username, and then the password that we need to connect to it. So if I go down to my Terraform here, and you see I already have been making some periodic changes. So basically, once you get this up, you want to run a Terraform init, and that's going to pull down everything that's needed here, you know, all your different modules and providers and stuff like that and then we can go in and then start making changes that's needed so as we can see on our actual Palo Alto there's no so I think you know under device our host name is production firewall of one domain let me tech you .com. these things I had already configured prior uh, but we don't have like any objects or anything so we're going to want to start to deploy things like that setting our network interfaces and things like that up and you can find all the documentation for that in here for what's required for those resource blocks. So as you can see, you got your network, um, you know, BGP configuration, you know, anything like that. As you can see, everything must have this lifecycle create before destroy. They had a reason for that in here. I think it's on the front page. Let me see if we can look at the documentation. I think it tells you. Okay, let's see. Let's start creating sure. the order object. Terraform handles updates, deletes does not by default work the way that Pan OS does things. In order for um, to make Terraform behave properly inside each of these and every resource, you need a specify a lifecycle of a block like this. And I think it talks a little bit maybe about it down here. No, it doesn't really. So basically, it's some maybe some way that Palo Alto works that Terraform doesn't necessarily um, do their update, create, and delete methods. 
So kind of just follow this as you're creating resource blocks. And then going back to it, as you can see, like you've got all our network um, networking things, objects, address groups, address objects, or an address object, address objects, things like that. So everything's there for you to kind of, you know, in the taking, build out your initial configurations. So now if I go back to my code here, I have some stuff commented out down here that I was testing out. But basically, we're just going to go ahead and apply some of this stuff. So I'm going to just take out this general settings. And this is a block to kind of define the device management information, like the name, host name, domain, those things that I had took out earlier. So the domain, we're going to keep letmetechu.com. But I'm going to call this uh, prod firewall 01. And there's other resource information you can define. Um, you can see that actually from the, let's go back here. Oh, device. And let's see, there's some general settings right here. So as you can see, I'm just doing host name, domain, but you can do all this other stuff here. You basically just, you know, provide the value or the key and then provide the value. So it's key and then value so I'm gonna do that and then we're gonna run the terraform plan oh I gotta make sure I save that so terraform plan and then as you can see we're adding in the prod firewall 01 host name then I'm gonna do a terraform apply and I'm just gonna do well, I was going to do an auto-approve, but I'll just go through it and then enter yes. So if we go back to our firewall and back to the device, we should see the host name change. So now with that set and anything else you need to set, we're going to go in and add some object. Add an object. And I have three objects here. Um, so the pan OS, pan OS address object and then the name of this resource now this name doesn't affect what the name of the object will be and so you want to make sure that these are uh, these need to be unique and this needs to be unique um, that way you don't like overwrite anything um, if you're trying to create multiples now this isn't like a really proper way of probably doing this because you're having to duplicate the code each time what you could do is create some type of uh, file that allows you to loop through and create multiple values of the same type of resource so you don't have to keep copying each time this block here to create this resource. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Actually, let me take cop, comment this out down below. This is just some other stuff like interfaces that I didn't really get to. But you know what, actually, let's go ahead. Yeah, we can actually create those too. Let's just create those as well. So let's save that and let's do another Terraform plan. Okay, there's five things being added. We got our interface port, port one, 9.9.9.2. Uh, we got an address object, another object. Oh, and then let me make sure all my names are sorted. Three, two, one. Okay, so we got five things being created. So now let's do a Terraform apply. And I'm just going to do an auto approve because I already know that I want this approved. In a live network, you'll probably just still do the plan and then apply. Um, and then actually type yes in to make sure everything is good. So this updates my local state file. Now, if you're using this in a team environment, you'll want that state file to be placed in somewhere where multiple people can access it because if multiple people are configuring the same um, firewall and they're using different state files, they can potentially overwrite stuff that you created. So you'll want to have that, whether it's an Azure, AWS, some type of storage account or uh, Terraform Cloud. You just want it centrally managed that way you can have like the locking mechanism and things like that when working against it so now if we go back in here we should be able to see our objects that were created 
Um, let's see if we can see our interfaces. Ethernet. Okay, we got our interfaces, layer three, the IP addresses. We got the comments, configure for internal traffic, configure for outbound traffic. And as you can see, we put those on there as well. So that's just a good start there in regards to getting a baseline config setup that you can easily replicate across different um, Palo Alto firewalls. If we go back to my EVE and G topology, I could essentially take that same config and let's say this is like a detached one that's not really, I'm gonna set up maybe like high availability. So it'll you know replicate across, but Let's say this is going to go in another branch office and there's just the same static content that's going to be set on there, like the domain name. Um, some stuff might change, but you, you would have variables, but you can easily change stuff and then deploy it and you save yourself instead of hours having to configure it or using some type of backup that could be old. You can keep this source control um, up to date that always has your config and the changes applied to it across the board. So again, that's that there. If you have any questions in regards to the setup, the images used, shoot me a comment down below. I'll be sure to get back with you. Um, like and subscribe to the channel. Um, I'll be able to help where I can. Again, if you also want to check out my um, site, letmetechyou.com, I'll be putting up maybe a little blurb there on like how this is set up and you know maybe um, some other um, additional features to use in Terraform with um, Palo Alto. Again, thanks for tuning in and hope to see you next time.